to my channel. So Mr. Miles <laughs> is finally here. Um, it was definitely an unexpected labor and delivery, which is what this video is going to be all about, my labor and delivery story. So I'm just going to get right into it because it is the craziest story. And he's making all kinds of noises. He just had his bottle. So yeah, so it all started on June 12th, which was a Monday, and I was going to just a regular prenatal appointment just to get my weight and talk about, you know, how I'm feeling and all that. Um, just a regular appointment and I got my blood pressure taken and this, I had previously had one blood pressure measurement that was slightly high. It was like 144 and it's supposed to be 140. Um, so they kind of like took note of that. This made two readings that were too high. So, and I had never had any issues with my blood pressure prior to being pregnant or even just prior in my pregnancy. I had been 120 over 80 pretty much for the entire pregnancy until just the past like or the last few weeks so it was so crazy so they got that blood pressure reading and they were like okay so you've had two blood pressure readings that have been high um so we're gonna call the doctor in so the doctor comes in and he's like yeah we're kind of nervous about like preeclampsia so you're going to be induced and i think my life like flashed before my eyes when he said induced I was like, what? <laughs> um, because I was only, I had just turned 37 weeks at that point and I was not expecting that whatsoever to tell me that I needed to be induced. So the doctor pretty much just said, you're going to get a call from the hospital in the next couple of days and we're going to get you induced. So I was like, oh my God, okay. So I was like in complete shock i could not believe it i'm like i'm about to have this baby so i immediately left the doctor's office and got in my car and i called brendan and i'm like you need to come home right now like the hospital is gonna call me i'm gonna get it <laughs> i'm gonna get induced um like you need to come home right now we need to pack we need to get ready like i am so i was so scared so that happened and that was on a monday and so we waited it was just crazy. We waited until Thursday afternoon. Um, and I finally was like, okay, the hospital has not called. Well, they called me, but just to say that they don't have any room for me. Um, so that happened like Tuesday, Wednesday, and then Thursday, they also did that. So then finally Thursday night, I called the hospital and I said, I was told I needed to be induced on Monday and I still haven't gotten into the hospital. So I ended up talking to the nurse that was in charge and she was like, yeah, we need to get you in like right now. So she said, come in at 7.30 PM and we will get you all ready. So I was like, okay. So <laughs> it was like the most anxious I've ever been in my life. Those three days of waiting to be called into the hospital. But I'm glad that I ended up just calling myself because it was like, it was just ridiculous. It was so crazy, but apparently the hospital was so busy, the um, labor and delivery like unit or whatever was packed. And we realized that when we got into the hospital and there was so many pregnant women just walking around and I was like, oh gosh, like there are gonna be so many babies born in June. But anyway, so we got there at 7 p.m. or 7.30 p.m. and we had to wait in the waiting room and I was talking to this woman who was sitting next to me um, in the waiting room and she like had the same exact story as me where, you know, they told her she needed to be induced and the hospital just kept calling her and saying, oh, we gotta put it off, we gotta put it off. Um, so yeah, that, that happened. <laughs> um, so finally they call me in and they put me in a room and they decided they're going to start giving me these miso pills m-i-s-o um, and it's basically pills that will soften your cervix um, because i was not dilated at all so they were going to give me these pills to soften my cervix and hopefully that would make me dilate so it i had to take six pills over 18 hours so 
pretty much I just laid in the hospital bed and took these like miso pills for <laughs> all six of them over the course of 18 hours and I it didn't cause me to have like contractions or pain or anything I was completely fine um so that happened and so that was for 18 hours we just sat in the hospital room and basically just hung out and watched tv and they gave me these pills every every like three yeah every three hours um so then they after the six pills they come in and they check my cervix and it didn't really do much um so they decided on the next step was going to be sorry i'm looking down i have this stuff written written down um but the next step was going to do a foley balloon which is literally a balloon that they put into your cervix to um and they inflate it in hopes that it'll like artificially make it dilate so they did that and honestly I think it was t over 12 hours that I had the balloon. Um, and so after that 12 hours, or I should say after that 12 hours, the um, nurses came in again and they checked me and I was only four centimeters dilated. So they were like, okay, this isn't really helping too much. You're only four centimeters dilated. So they decided to move me into a labor and delivery room and start the Pitocin. So it was just like, try, like attempt after attempt after attempt and nothing was working. So I had the miso pills for 18 hours. I had the Foley balloon for 12. So this is like two or three days of being in the hospital. And I'm like, I feel like this baby is never gonna come. Um, so they ended up moving me into a labor and delivery room, which was so huge and beautiful. And I was like, this is great, but there weren't any windows, which was kind of weird, but it was really awesome. And I'll, I think I took footage so I can, I'll insert some clips here and there. Um, so then they ended up putting me on Pitocin. So um, I guess how Pitocin works, I'm not really sure. All of this is very foggy for me. Um, I think I was just kind of in shock the whole time. So I'm, if I'm not like remembering everything clearly, I'm sorry. I, I did the best that I could to kind of remember what happened. But honestly, so much happened over such a like long period of time. I was in the hospital for six days. So it was just like, my mind is just a blur, but whatever. Anyway, so they put me on Pitocin. And so Pitocin is what's supposed to um, force you into having contractions and make you dilate, I think. Um, so they gave me Pitocin and most people say that it's like the worst feeling ever. The contractions hurt so bad. I did not feel it for like so long because they can like give you higher doses. I'm sorry if I'm not explaining this right, but it started at like two and then she moved it up to four and then she moved it up to six and then eight. And then I made it all the way to 20 before I felt any contractions. So it was kind of a while before I actually started feeling any contractions with the Pitocin. Um, but this is where things <laughs> start to get a little blurry because I was just like all over the place and so like nervous and it was just crazy. Um, but the great thing is that Brendan was with me the entire time and he was so, so awesome and so supportive. And I, I couldn't ask for anybody better to be with me and to help me through through this because it was a lot and we were in the hospital for a very, very long time um but anyway so finally i started to have contractions i definitely started having contractions pretty badly and i was like i want an epidural i want an epidural I had to wait for the person to come in to do the epidural and i was like sitting on the edge of the bed like dying the contractions were so bad and the epidural was really scary because um, it was getting to the point where the contractions were so bad that I couldn't sit still. 
and um, so you know if you've ever had an epidural you have to like sit on the edge of the bed and like lean forward and try to be as still as possible because they're literally putting a needle into your back um, and it was so so difficult for me to try to be still while he was doing that because I was having contractions really bad while he was giving me the epidural um, so that was pretty scary and they did have to make Brendan leave the room because it had to be like a sterile a sterile um, environment but I got the epidural I stopped feeling the contractions and then I started pushing and I just pushed forever and I did so many different positions um, I like did it on my side my left side my right side I also got like this bar thing that you can like put your feet on and hold on to and that was actually pretty helpful um, but Brendan was with me the whole time helping me and you know coaching me through I ended up pushing for three hours and the doctor came in again <laughs> And he's like, you've been pushing for three hours, um, you know, and he checked and his, um, the baby's head was like still really far up. So they were getting a little concerned. So he suggested that I get a C-section. And honestly, at that point, after pushing for three hours, I was just so exhausted and I was just so like out of it. And I, I really didn't even like know what was going on. I was just, I think I was just in shock. So when he suggested a C-section and I was so tired and I was thinking, you know, I don't wanna put this baby through any more stress. Um, so let's just go ahead and do the C-section. So the anesthesiologist came into the labor and delivery room and um, you know, she, she did her thing and then they, and it was the craziest feeling because I was numb pretty much from my shoulders down. Yeah, my shoulders down, I was numb. And so they literally had to like lift me up off the bed and bring me into the, um, bring me into the operating room. And I just felt like, you feel like a dead fish. You literally are just like flopping around and there's nothing you can do. You have, you just feel like completely numb and it's a really crazy feeling. Um, but everything during the C-section just happens so fast. They put up the curtain. There was like 10, it felt like 10 people in there. Brendan had to put these like scrubs on and everything. Um, and it was just, it was really, really scary. And um, I ended up, before Brendan came in, I started to cry. And all the nurses were like, are you okay? Do you feel pain? They thought that I like the, um, they thought that I could like feel, feel something. And I was like, no, no, I, I'm not hurting. I'm just like, I was just emotional and scared. And um, yeah, it was really, really hard. And then Brendan came in and honestly, the C-section felt like it took like two minutes. It, it was so fast. And then they're like, okay, he's, he's coming out now and they lifted him like over the screen and oh my God, it was just like the most emotional thing ever. And the first thing I said to him was, um, um, I saw Miles and I was like, I'm so proud of you. And I started crying and Brennan was crying and it was super, super emotional. Um, but yeah, it was, it was so crazy. Everything happened so fast. Um, but, and I, as soon as I saw him, I was like, I just, I fell in love with him and I, I just couldn't believe everything that had happened. Um, and yeah, it was really, really crazy. And I'm sorry that I can't like, um, remember every single detail just because I think I was just in shock the whole time. Um, and it was really difficult for me to go through all of that. Um, but it was all worth it because I got, my sweet little baby boy and he's so cute um but anyway so after the c-section um you know we were brought into a recovery room and we were there for two two more nights i think yeah because he was born on a sunday and then we left on like wednesday afternoon 
um, but the first two nights for him with him was honestly so awesome and it was so it was so much easier taking care of a baby all through the night than it was going through all the pain and all the confusion of all these different things they were doing to me um, so once he came I was just so happy to be with him but the recovery was pretty tough because I basically like kind of went through a vaginal birth because I had pushed for three hours and my body was so so sore just everywhere was sore and then also having a c-section if you've ever had a c-section the pain was just like unbelievable and I was on so many like medications and um like painkillers and stuff so I was very like completely completely out of it I don't really remember too much of those two days that um after I had him so <laughs> it was definitely crazy but I just could not wait to come home and bring him home and it was just the best thing ever um so yeah that was my labor and delivery story I'm sorry that I'm like all over the place um but I'm just I'm so in love with him and I'm so happy that he's finally here and I can try to show you guys, but he's just the best thing ever. So Miles is now two weeks old, so I have his first week of life and his second week of life videos already done. So I'm gonna post this and then post those two, and then I will be all caught up on my videos. And then tomorrow is actually the 4th of July, so I will be um, doing a first 4th of July video. So that'll be really fun. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to say thank you for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.